Right, so this has been sent in for no power. Uh, same customer sent in a Nintendo Switch for no power the other day, and that turned on absolutely fine. So, I don't know what to think with this, but this one doesn't actually turn on. Um, I have tried it before I went live, because I didn't want to waste time. So, if you're watching this back in the video, I am live streaming. Uh, I'm on Twitch at the minute, twitch.tv forward slash the coder 2015. So let's just have a look because it has been opened. Someone has done something to it, but I'll just show you that it's not actually powering on. And this is going to be the first revision PS4 Pro, the one with the fat IEC cable, the two pin IEC cable, but it's not actually powering on. Let's have a look. I'm wondering if it's just uh, that someone's damaged the power connector. Uh, okay, so someone's opened it, but it looks like they haven't cleaned it. It's a bit weird. Let's get to taking it apart, shall we? Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board, or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi-layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing, and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a one to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs, which start at just $120 per square meter. Check out what PCB we have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pinned comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. So I've got a feeling that someone's tried to repair this and maybe broken the um, power supply connector, the 5 volt connector. That's fairly common, especially on these older models because there's no side support. There's no ground, ground legs anchoring it down. Right, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, yep, damage connector, typical. All right, well, that would explain why he's got no power. I haven't had one of these for a while, actually, with the uh, 5 volt connector damaged. Yeah, it should be nice and easy then. There's the famous last words, but this is pretty common, but I haven't had one for a while. Um, not many people tend to send them in anymore because they think it's expensive. Fun fact, I only charge £40 to repair these traces. I say only because that is incredibly cheap. Anywhere else I know charges like £60-£70. So, yeah, I only charge £40 plus the return postage. But, yeah, let's get that done then. Hi-ho, hi-ho, under the microscope we go. We can reuse the connector because it's not been damaged. No one's tried to glue it or anything. So, the problem with these, like I say, is there's no anchor points. So, on the newer PS4s, there's an anchor point on the sides. But on these ones, unfortunately, there isn't. So, when people go to disconnect it, they pull up on it, and they end up damaging the connector on it. I think it's... yeah, it's going to go that way. So, what we need to do is, first of all, prep this. So, I'm going to mark this so I know which, way, which side the back is. Actually, it's a flush side, which is the back. I don't need to mark it. So I'm going to prep this first. Ready for going back on the board. So the only problem with these ones is you have to find a way to secure them. But you can use like super glue or whatever. I think I've got some super glue somewhere that I can use. But you've got to find a way to secure them back on. Right, so I'll add a tad of flux to these pins because we've got to get these old traces off. It would still conduct with it with those traces still on, but it's best to clean it up. So I'll just run the iron over it and it'll desolder the old traces. Straightforward enough. But yeah, people think when they damage these boards, they're either a goner or they think it's going to be too expensive to fix. But no, really not. There we go, so that's prepped and ready. And next, we are going to need to prep the board. We're ready for the port's arrival. We need to expose the wires where the traces are meant to run to. 
So we've got this one here. We've got this one here, which is most of the traces there, but need to expose some of it just to restore this bit because that's where the pin's going to sit. This one I can just bridge. I don't need to run a jumper to that one. It's close enough to the point where I can just bridge it. This ground pad's still there, so we can ignore that. And this one, we need to break this, well, the remainder of this trace away. And just expose the voya. There we go. Next on the agenda, we're going to add some solder and tin the jumpers, well, tin the pads for the jumpers, rather, should I say. So there's the ground pad tinned, there's the 5 volt tinned, and then we've got these, I think these are signal lines, I don't know exactly what they are, but I'm sure they're just signal lines, but I still need restoring, because one of these pins tells the 12 volt to enable, because the 12 volt doesn't enable until you turn the console on, so it has to talk back to the power supply and do something, I think it pulls a line down or something. We're going to get some 0.1 mil jumper wire. Oi. There we go. Damn thing didn't want to solder. I'm going to hold the jumper wire in place. And there we go. Now we've got a nice solid connection. Chop. Yeet. Right, trace numero two. There we go. Right, so there's that one. Let's try and conform to the original trace. I don't think length matters, but I'll try and get it to the right length. There we go. And then the third one isn't going to make a difference because I can just bridge that one. Or well, I should be able to just bridge it. It should be uh, close enough to the point where I can. And now I can put the connector back on. So grab it with the tweezers, flow it, or flow this ground pad. I want to try and get it as close to being in the original position as I can. I can always run a jumper wire after the fact if it won't bridge for that other one, so it's fine. Damn it, go away, jump, uh, go away, random pube. Oh, that stinks. That will add a little bit of strength to the connector as well, to be honest. So, I'd rather. Do it that way if I can. And then I can push down on the connector. Make sure that it sits flat. And then if I just run some, well, if I just flow some solder on it, it should make a contact with these jumpers. So you've got this one here. And 
and then we've got this one just here and they should be done a right, bit of IPA There we go. Right, so before I start to secure anything, I'm just going to test these in the, with the multimeter just to make sure that they're all good. Right, so I'm in diode mode. I've got my red probe on at ground. And we get a beep there, 0 0.65, so that's good. That's ground, that's good. This one's not going to beep because it's a high reading. 1.37 volt drop to ground, that's good. And um, we've got 1.04 volt drop to ground on that. So we've got a contact on all of those pins. So that's all good. And now we can put a little bit of conformal coating down to protect those traces that we've just created. Oh, sorry, solder mask, should I say. And get people moaning at me when I call it conformal coating, even though it does the same bloody job. That's not conformal coating. Conformal coating is what they put on the board at the factory. This is solder mask. Completely different. Because yeah. I'm a crybaby. Right, let's get a bit of heat on this, not much, but just a little bit of heat to help the solder mask cure. Should be good there. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's nice and solid. That's going to keep that from oxidizing or anything stop it being exposed to the elements and also if someone do, does take this off in the future it's not going to affect it it's not going to actually pull the wire off with it or it shouldn't so unfortunately the only thing that i have is super glue to secure this in that's it that's all i've got i haven't got any epoxy or anything like that well i have but i'm not sitting here waiting for epoxy to cure uh so brand spanking new tube so like i said we need to secure this because the problem with these is there's no anchor point so on the other consoles on the other ps5s uh, sorry ps4s what we could have done is we could have recreated the ground points because they usually tear with the connector coming off we could have recreated the, the ground points using some solder braid and then anchor it down with that and it will be absolutely solid but with these there is none and that's one of the reasons they actually get damaged but unfortunately we need to find something to actually glue this down with so I'm just going to use a bit of super glue I don't want to use much because well I don't want to completely ruin the board I'm just going to use a little bit There we go, and that should, keyword there is should, secure the connect, connector in. Right, we're done on this, I think, for now. Okay, I have a brand new paintbrush, so I can clean this damn thing. It looks like someone's attempted to service this, damage that connector, and just given up. So, it's fine, it doesn't take long to clean them. Well, not when you're experienced in doing it anyway. And for someone who's never done it before, they'd probably take them twice as long, but... Yeah, I've cleaned hundreds of these things. Doesn't take but five minutes. I've got a little motto anyway. If I ever take the console apart for anything, I'm going to service it. No matter what. Unless it's just been done. And most of the time you find that when these get damaged, they carry on cleaning it anyway, because I don't realise how important it is, but... Meh. All right. There's actually not that much dust in this. It's all good. 
There we go. Good stuff. It is turning on. And... Ooh! Ugly cam. There we go. To the owner of this PlayStation, your PS subscription is ending soon. According to that screen up there. Do we get controller sync? Yep. Come on. Right, there we go, that's working. Test internet. PlayStation Network sign in failed because it's due an update, but that's fine. And of course, connection speed is going to be slow as hell because it's a PlayStation. And PlayStations suck for internet. Uh, right, test the internet on LAN. And yeah, okay, 69 megabits per second apparently we've got. Hey, Archer, you legend. Thank you, mate. How are you, buddy? Uh, right, so internet's working. It's recognising the disk drive. And it's a win because he doesn't have FIFA on here. So that's why this was fixable, because FIFA's not installed. If FIFA was installed, you'd have no chance of fixing it. Absolutely no chance of fixing it if FIFA was installed. But yeah, <laughs> that's working. Let's just make sure it works in 4K. Uh, well, I mean, it's working in 4K now, so yeah. Make sure 1080p works. Yeah. 720p, yeah, and back to automatic, yep, yeah. um, just to make sure, yeah, 4k, good, sweet, well, everything seems to be working absolutely fine, so I'll get a full test tomorrow, off stream, but... I need to stress test it, obviously, make sure it doesn't overheat or anything like that, but other than that, this console's working. Go back to the customer. Very, very nice. Happy days. So, yeah, if you watch this back as a video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all of that jazz. And, uh, yeah, every time someone doesn't subscribe, a little kitten cries, so make sure you subscribe and prevent it. I'm sure the kitten will appreciate it. 